So who would have thought that obtaining a job where I worked for a nonprofit organization that helped people would cause me to have more doubts in my church and possibly my religion? So only a month after I had obtained my job working as a nurse's aide, I interviewed for and received a job where I was more working in the social work arena. I would get to work with people with mental health issues, low-income people who didn't have much of anything. So when I obtained this job, I realized this feels like my calling. This has always been what I've been striving to do, helping people, especially you know people who are not privileged. and. I was really excited to be doing something to really help people that really mattered to me. But the problem was, I still hadn't figured out what was me and what was God, and, and I was still confused. And even though I had this immense feeling of, you know, this is the place for me, I still admitted this was a feeling, and I still had some reservations as to whether I could trust that or not. And later I talked to my pastor, and he suggested I get involved in Sunday school. And I had said, you know, I, I didn't really have a passion for Sunday school. I'd done Sunday school at the church I was at uh, when I was in school. And I told him, I explained I didn't have a passion for it, but he was really encouraging and pushing me to go into Sunday school. It didn't really seem to pay much attention to my passion for, for the career. So I had this conflict of what, what I thought was God's will and what the pastor thought was God's will. So I decided I was going to do both. I was going to do Sunday school and I was going to do my job. At the same time, I figured I could do that, you know, give, give to the church and give to the community and do both. And so I pursued each of these things at about the same time. Now in this video, I'm going to discuss how work impacted my thinking about the church, about religion, things of this sort. And in the next video, I'm going to discuss how Sunday school impacted that. So I started learning my job, and it was a very complex, high-stress, high-paced job. It was quite overwhelming at first. And I remember uh, learning about this paper trail, you know, how I had to, every move I made, you know, I basically had to document. All this was required because since we got some funding from the government, and since we were a nonprofit organization, we had to prove all this stuff, you know, that we were giving back to the community and this is what we were doing. And I remember thinking, you know, our, our jobs are very similar, you know, Pastor and I. I started to compare his job and my job. and the church and my organization that I worked for. And I realized, you know, he doesn't have to document every move he makes. He's not under that kind of scrutiny from anyone, really. He had to renew his pastor's license, I think once a year, however often it was, but he didn't have to write documentation when he met with clients. He wasn't accountable if something bad happened to anyone in his congregation. There wasn't a system that was sort of making sure this was okay, making sure the pastor was doing his job properly. And I, I thought about it and I was like, wait a second. What happens if the pastor does do something unethical? How is how does anyone know? How is he accountable for any actions he takes? What happens if he actually did something to harm someone else? What if what if some of his words actually did end up driving somebody from God? What accountability does he have? And I thought, okay, afterlife, but we believe in a system that is grace-based, a system that is based on forgiveness. If my pastor did something that hurt somebody else and caused harm to them, and then they ended up leaving the church as a result and ended up leaving God for good, they would go to hell. But my pastor, if he had repented for these things, he would go to heaven. That didn't seem very fair. It seemed like we needed an earthly system some kind of checks and balances within churches. And I knew that there were some churches that had more of this, but the church I went to didn't. Um, and, and then this started making me think, what about the money I've given to the church? What about the money I've given to the church? Where does that go? And I realized that all went to just the church. There was no organization that like handled it and gave my pastor a particular salary. And I thought to myself, the work I was in, every penny had to be accounted for. There was a huge financial department and, and everything had to, to be lined up and everything had to be documented and everything had to be accounted for to make sure that nobody 
uh, was stealing money, that nobody was doing something unethical if that was the case. I'm not saying that the pastor was doing anything unethical. I'm not, I, I don't know. I have no idea. The issue was not whether the pastor was doing anything wrong. The issue was there were no checks and balances to make sure that this didn't happen. And, and shouldn't the pastor implement a sort of system that makes sure this doesn't happen? Shouldn't these records be public? Because I, I'd been given money to the church for years and years. I'd given thousands of dollars to the church. I'd never seen a, a one meeting explaining where all that money went. Maybe they were available if people asked for them, but it seemed like this should be, you know, advertised a few times a year. You know, if you want to know where the money of the church was going, you know, come to this meeting and we'll discuss it. Or, you know, there should have been some sort of public records or something above the church to make sure that the, the pastor was not abusing this. Where is the accountability in all this? I, mean, I didn't distrust my pastor, but I distrusted the system and I thought, you know, if I was ever financially in trouble, if I had problems, I, I consider myself a good person, but how tempting would it be if you just had access to all that? How tempting would it be to just take out of that, you know, to, to just give more to yourself? Shouldn't we have a system that accounts for this sort of human behavior? The more I thought about it, the more I thought this is a system that has the potential for abuse. Like I said, I was not blaming that the pastor was abusing the system. I was thinking this system could easily be abused by somebody who would want to. And I thought that the church should be a system that's trying to protect them against those things. If our spirits are eternal, and whether we go to heaven or hell is somewhat dependent on this sort of thing, if, if the pastor's job is really the most important job, if the church is so important in keeping people uh, seeking after God, shouldn't we be doing more to make sure that this stuff doesn't happen, I thought? Wouldn't you want to set something up like this, it seemed like? <sighs> but there wasn't. There wasn't anything like that. It was just, if the pastor did something wrong, he would be accountable in the afterlife. And, and that was it. It didn't make very much sense to me. And it started to really bother me. Because he, there was no one he really reported to, or nothing that really made sure he was in line. Besides God. And it's not that I didn't trust God, but sometimes God relied on people to do certain things. I felt like God relied on me to witness people and try to save people. Why wouldn't he rely on us to make a system? If the pastor really was teaching something immoral or wrong, who was gonna stop him? The only thing I thought I could do was change churches, which I suppose was a possibility. But nobody could stop him. God wasn't going to just strike him down. People were allowed, people, we had free speech. People were allowed to say what they were going to say. But I kind of thought that God's kingdom would, would protect against this a little bit more than it seemed to. But I was told that I was supposed to follow my pastor no matter what. But I was having a harder and harder time with this. And I thought maybe, maybe if I get in ministry, maybe if I start making a difference, I can, I can bring up these concerns more. Maybe they just don't know. Maybe they just haven't thought of this. Maybe God's putting these doubts in my head to try to make the system better. I don't know. I knew I was a female, so that would make me far less likely to be listened to, but maybe I could, as I got up higher, I could bring up these things, but I knew right now that me saying this wouldn't make a difference, wouldn't change anything. I figured I guess I don't have as much spiritual knowledge as the pastor. Maybe there's reasons, maybe I should trust God more. After all, this is the church that I got saved in. This is the church that I was first introduced to a real relationship with Christ. Shouldn't I trust that the pastor knows what he's doing? Shouldn't I trust that the pastor has the flock in mind? If I just couldn't just up and leave. Because I felt like every church would have its problems. I thought, you know, no church is perfect. We're human made, we're people made. But it really got to me. And while this was going on, I was starting to shadow Sunday school and try to get involved in Sunday school as well due to the pastor's request. And I thought this might help me increase my trust in the pastor and in the church. And that didn't really help either. I'll be discussing how Sunday school impacted me in the next video.